many of us know little or nothing about the history of slave trade in Nigeria. So today we'll be going to Badagri to see what our forefathers experienced. Yes, my name is Amaka Samuel Okon. Let's go. The roads are bad and likely not safe. So we took a boat trip to Badagri. While learning about the history of slave trade today, we will also want to know the cost of slave trade, previous forms of acquiring slaves, the abolition of slave trade, and la is a coastal city in Lagos State, Nigeria, with its native occupation being mat and basket weaving, boat carving, fishing, and coconut farming. Badagri was known for notoriously exporting over 500,000 slaves to the Europeans for 400 years. The old city of Badagri was seen to be the successful community for business in salt, but these great business gave way to the horrible slave trade which conquered all other commercial interests in Badagri. According to history, Badagri was found by a farmer called Agbede. Today, Badagri provides endless experience for tourists. A slave is someone forced to work for and obey someone else. He or she is also considered to be their property, while slave trade is the capturing, selling, and buying of enslaved so, persons. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Yeah, you're welcome to Badagri. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me, talk about Mobi is my name. Amaka. Wow, is nice to name. meet you. Thank you. So, this is a Mobi Family Slave Relics Museum. And here, have the real chain chakos used on our forefathers during the period of slave trade. The chain here are over 500 years old. No. Because slave trade lasted in Badagri for about 350 to 400 years. Slave trade was abolished on paper in the year 1852. Physically, 1888, by the help of the man buried here, Chief Sumbu Mobi. The father of the man buried here was a middleman between the white and the black. So he buys slaves from the black and resell to the white men. Of course, that was what the people of Badagri were doing then. Slaves were not being captured from Badagri. Slaves were brought from the hinterland. Any slaves captured from the eastern part of Nigeria, for example, were taken down to Calabar. White slaves gotten from the Oyo Empire were brought down to Badagri. Those are the two slave coasts, those are the two slave depots we have for transatlantic slave trade because we practice two types of slave trade transatlantic, trans Sahara. In the northern part of Nigeria, they practice trans Sahara trade. So slaves have been taken through the Sahara Desert, but here, slaves are taken through the Atlantic Ocean. The Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese were our customer here in Badagri. So they bring slaves from the hinterland. Any slaves from the Oyo Empire were brought down here. Mm. They sell to the people of this community, and the people of this community will sell to the white men. And that was what the father of the man buried here was doing. He a middle man between the white and the black. The man was nicknamed Chief Moby by the white men. And that's, it. that's how, where they get my surname from, Moby. Exactly. Each time the white men come around, the man usually offers them kola nuts. And he tells them Yoruba language, a Moby because he doesn't understand English. The white men were always saying in a movie jail each time they come around. So they gave him a nickname from there, Chief Moby. Moby. And Chief Moby was part of those buying and selling slaves. But Agri has eight quarters then, until date. And six out of these eight quarters were dealing with one country or the other. The father of the man buried there were dealing with the, the British slave merchants. Mm. So in the year 1852, the father and seven other ships in Badagri signed the Treaty of the Abolition of Slave Trade. The British slave merchants stopped coming to Badagri from the year 1852. The Portuguese were still coming. And so the man buried here waged war against the Portuguese slave merchants in the year 1888. It took him 10 years before he could conquer them. And so finally in the year 1888, this is the last vessel living by that group. The slave inside the vessel, these had the real chain around their neck. And that's why I said the chains are about 500 years old. This is called the neck lock. Wow. Imagine the sound of the chain. Neck lock for the neck of the slaves. Slaves were meant to walk with these around their neck for 18 hours every day, three to four months traveling on the Atlantic Ocean. 
Imagine the weight of the chain on the neck of human being. Ah! Even this thing here. What? So imagine this on the neck of human being traveling long? for three to four months on the Atlantic Ocean, walking inside the farm every day for 18 hours every day. So imagine this on the neck of human being walking. And depending on how long this is, so this, a chain can have like 10, 15 neck lock, which means a chain will connect like 10, 15 people. They line them up on a single file. So this is called the neck lock for the neck of the slaves. Wow. Here's a torture weapon. And this is used on stubborn slaves who refuse to walk inside the farm. Slave who disobeys his master, the forces into their hand, down to the wrist. As you can see, this is not going easily. What they do is to break the bone of the slaves, forces to the wrist. After forcing this to the wrist, they make them climb the platform. The master has well climbed the platform, screw this up to a tall tree. The master comes down from the platform and removes the platform. The slaves will now be suspended on the tree, dingling from morning to night. In the course of doing that, most of them died. The white man doesn't care because our forefathers were used in exchange of items. And this is called the mouth clip. Mouth clips are used on slaves working inside the farm. There are two categories of slaves. We have slaves working in the farm, we have slaves working in the house. Those working in the house are called domestic slaves. The male domestic slaves are usually castrated because the white man doesn't want them to impregnate their wife or children. They castrate them, they remove their testes. So they become big, huge, and tall. They use them as body guide or use them whenever they are going for war or whenever they need to carry heavy objects. That's where you see them coming outside. The female domestic slaves are used as wet nurse. The white man doesn't want the breast of their wife to lose shape. So they don't allow their wife, wife to breastfeed. Whenever they discover that their wife is pregnant, they impregnate the female slaves. And the black woman will now be the one to breastfeed the child of the white woman. Many a times they kill the baby of the black woman or collect that baby from the black woman and take the baby to the farm for another woman breastfeeding inside the farm. So for the slaves working in the farm not to communicate to one another because the white men believe that if they communicate to one another, they can plan on how to attack them. Mm. They usually pierce their mouths with hot iron, the lower and the upper lips. In the morning, while going to the farm, mm. and they padlock their mouths like this for them not to talk or eat while working on the plantation. So terrible. And this is called the light chain for the babies. Any child given birth by slaves is a slave. And this baby were usually not allowed to be moving about the farm because the white man doesn't want them to step on where their parents have planted so as not to kill the plants. So they gather the children together. They chain their wrists with the size of the chain. Make them sit down under a tree, far away from where their parents are walking. So this is called the light chain for the hands of the babies. And this is called the branding iron. Branding iron. Slaves don't bear name during the period of slavery. They bear the name of their master. master. No wonder why in Lagos today, in Nigeria, we have families that bear name that doesn't sound like our local name. Mm -hmm. If you ask me now and I, I tell you my name is Chukwe Me, you know that I'm from the eastern part of Nigeria. If I tell you my name is Adeoshu, you know from which part of, of exactly. Nigeria. But there are some names that you will not be able to trace where they come from. Williams, Smith, Smith Cole, Coca, Pedro, Buckner, and so Palastin. on. That was the reason why we have this name. For the white men to be able to identify their slaves, they will have to write their name on the body of their slaves. And that will be their sole name from that day. Hajai Crowder, the man who did the translation of English Bible to Yoruba version. Crowder doesn't sound like a Nigerian name. Crowder is a foreign name. The man who adopted him gave him that name, Crowder. And you have to bear your master's name. So the slaves that return, the, those that return back after the abolition of slave trade are the families we have in Lagos or Abeokuta are bearing such name. No wonder we have Brazilian quarters in Lagos. We have Sierra Leone quarters in Lagos. So for the white men to be able to identify their slaves, they put this in fire. When this is red hot, they now just write the name of the owner of the slaves on the body of the slaves. This is what we now adopt as fashion today. Tattoo is what we call it. The children of the state taken out of Africa saw this right up on the body of their forefather, and they thought they put it there for fashion. And they begin to adopt this as fashion. And today, we all join them in adopting this as fashion, tattoo. The second function of this is to pierce the mouth of the slaves. 
for them to be able to padlock their mouth. While the last one, Sean, to pierce the foot of any slave who tried to run away, being captured. They put this in fire. When this is red hot, they put the leg of the slaves on the falling tree and eat this into the foot of the slave to pierce the leg or break the bone inside the leg. Branding iron or bone breaker. And this is called the Hanku lock. This is used on the leg of two human beings at a time. For them not to run away, they will need to share this around their ankle. You have this around your neck and you have this on your ankle mm -hmm. for three to four months before, you get to your, before they make their final destination. So this was the money spent in Africa in those scouries. Mm -hmm. But this was only recognized in Africa. The white man doesn't see this as money. And that led to the introduction of trade by butter. High terms were brought to Africa in exchange of human beings. This size of the cannon gun was in exchange of 40 human beings, and the big size of this goes for 100 human beings. When you get to the slave market, the blockaded market, you're going to see the big size of this that was used in exchange of 100 human beings during the period of slavery. And over there is slave drinking water bowl. 40 to 50 slaves were meant to drink water from this bowl at a time. And they, were forced, they, 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 they drink water from this pot with their hand being tied to the back. They have access to food and water once in a day. So they tend to rush the water. In the course of rushing the water, most times they push one another. They get caught by the head of the pot, mm. and the blood drips into the water. The slaves have no choice. They have to drink the water because they have access to food and water once in a day. And finally, you're going to be seeing this well at the point of no return. I just quickly need to tell you this before you get to the point of no return. Slaves are forced to drink from this well. It's a must. And that will, that's going to be the last water they will, take, they will drink before taking them to the ship. After forcing them to drink from this well, they force them to make this recitation. I am leaving this land. My spirit lives with me. I shall not come back now. My shackles do not break. It is the shackles that hold the ship down. My sister bear me witness. I shall not return. This land shall depart. My soul do not revolt. My spirit goes along with me. I depart to the land unknown. I shall not return. They become <laughs> less aggressive and they lose their memory. And this was the reason why um, Nigeria was the largest supplier of slaves during the period of slave trade. Nigeria and Angola contributed 24, 24 percent. And if you, if, you, if you take 48 from 100 percent, what do we have left? 16 percent were taken from, from Ghana. And majority of slaves taken out of Africa were taken down to Brazil. About 38.5 percent of slaves taken out of Africa were in Brazil. And that is why today, the Yoruba we speak in Nigeria is their second official language. And virtually all our gods in Yoruba land are worshipped in Brazil up to date. Yemeja, Hoshun, Ifa, Egugu, and so on and so forth. All these festivals were, were, were practiced in Brazil to date. Go to Trinidad and Tobago, Haiti, Jamaica, you see some of our culture in Nigeria being practiced over there because the majority of them were taken out of here down there. Tell me talk about movies, the name once again. Any question before we move forward? Yes. I want to find out where, while the slaves were here, yeah. do they talk this place often? Or as the water goes down, nobody checks on them. They can go as far as, because I can't even bend myself to drink. Yeah. Do they talk the water often? Do they come from time to time? Or if it goes lower, you sort yourself out? Whenever the water gets down, then they will need to give them hand, one handful of water for one day. So you can imagine even if you are buying one pure water for 15 naira, compared to one handful of water for Indeed. one day. And anywhere they are going, they move it, all these items. So it was Shifso Mobi who seized it from them in the year 1818. 18. I actually tell people that if not for him, the trade may last longer. Because um, the Portuguese were somehow stubborn. They don't want to leave Africa because they were using our people. That's even after Africa. the abolition? The slave trade was abolished on paper in Badagri in the 1850s. Let me quickly take you through the treaty of the abolition of slave trade. This is a document our forefathers signed in the year 1852, the treaty of the abolition of slave trade between the British government and the people of Badagri. And let me, ta let me tell you this. The missionary played a major role in the abolition of slave trade here in Badagri because the early missionary who, who arrived in Badagri witnessed the signing of this document in the year 1852. And like I said, it is not only the, the British that are coming, the Dutch, the French, the Portuguese, 
were coming. But the Portuguese were the last set of people to leave Badagri. And this is the Treaty of Session. This is the handwritten one. This is the typed one. Treaty of Session um, between the British government and also the people of Badagri. These are the ships in Badagri that signed the, the treaty in the year 1863. So from 1807, after the British signed into law the abolition of slave trade, it still took us 50 something years before it finally to accept it. Because yes. I know some Nigerians, some of us, even I'm not just Nigeria, even the Ashanti, yeah. to were against the abolition. They wanted sure. the trade and the business to go on. Sure. So even after 1807, for like 50 something years, we're still dealing in. Yes. Wow. Well, that means we're the one actually doing ourselves. We're selling ourselves and doing ways. Most of our, our leaders, our chiefs, in quotes, were enjoying the business. And I, they don't want I, to I agree to that with you, but I will also let you know that um, if you refuse to join the trade, somebody close to you is ready to sell you out. Mm. You have no choice. Mm. So if you refuse to join, the only option you have is to kill yourself. One of our real father was captured into slavery. In Badagri, we have eight of them. One of them was captured into slavery. It was it was sold out to Brazil. This is this is torture. This is darkness. Okay, thank you very you're, much. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Okay, guys, you've heard it all. We are just starting. We have more and many more places to show you guys. Okay, let's go. So sad. The Badagri Heritage Museum is a one-story building that houses the artifacts, records, and culture of the Badagri people. It was built in 1863 as the first colonial administrative building in Nigeria. Objects in this Hi. museum date Hello. back Thank to pre-slave era, yeah. slave era, and post-slave era. It is divided into several sections displaying diverse historical relics within the museum, spanning over 400 years of slavery in Nigeria. The Badagri Heritage Museum reminds us of the slave trade era, and it is a place we can look back to see how far we have come. Now in the year 1445, enslaved Africans were taken from West Africa down to West Indies. At the West Indies, they were forced to work on the plantation. They plant some crop like sugar cane, tobacco, cotton, rice, and bananas. So what they planted with the harvest, they're taking back to Europe. In Europe, the crops were turned to finishing goods. That is when they turned sugar cane into sugar, tobacco into cigarettes, cotton into textile, bananas into whiskey. And those items were brought to Africa again in, in exchange of more enslaved Africans. So the system is triangular. And because they work via the Atlantic Ocean, so they come across the Atlantic Triangular State Tree. And that was between 14th to 18th century because we are told that they used 415 years of slavery in Badagi from 1473 till 1888 in Badagi. So that is 450 years of slavery in Badagi. And over there we have a symbol used to campaign against slave trade. So this is a symbol used to campaign against slave trade when the enslaved Africans decide to take destiny into their hands, fighting for their freedom. But we can see this young man asking, am I not a man and a brother? That is, is he not a man like the master? Is he not a brother to the master? Why is the master trying to enslave him? And then we are told that the first campaign against slave trade on the 22nd to 23rd of August, 1791, when they are heading down to Santo Domingo, and that's the present day Haiti. And also the Europeans divide the West African coast into four major coasts. So each of the coasts was named after the primary resources that were discovered. At the initial stage, it was divided into two major guineas. We have the upper guineas and the lower guinea. So the upper Guinea is the present day Liberia. And then we have the lower Guinea, which is the four major coasts. And each of the coasts was named after what they discovered. So you can see the trade route. You can see the trade route, how slaves were marched down to the slave market here in Badagi. They established the market in Badagi in the year 1502. It was the largest and the oldest slave market along the west coast of Africa. They established the market 
they sold 300 South Africans every market day from the slave market. And then annually, we're told that they sold up to 17,000 slaves every market, every mm. market, every year from the slave market. So the market becomes so popular that even people from different places come to Badabi to trade with the, yes, they have interest in the slave market. Then after buying the slave, they take the slave down to the point of no return. So here we have the weapons used in slave raiding. These are different weapons used to raid to get more enslaved Africans. So we can see the iron swords and the dang guns. Those things were used to wage war. And they used them to get more slaves. So here we have the neck chains for the male, the neck chains for the females. We have the one for the child, and this one for two different slave legs, while this one for one slave leg. So you can see the knife, and then this is, this is how the knife is used. So this is how the knife is used. So you can see a lady slave being branded before shipping how they write the names of the masters at the back of the slave or at the chest of the slave. Mm -hmm. And then we have the separation of families, how they separate the mother from the father and the child. They will be sold to different countries. They are not allowed to see, to see themselves to the end of their life. Here we have the inspectations in Tanzania. So here we are, you can see how the enslaved Africans were inspected. So they were thoroughly checked if they were strong and fit to work for them on the plantation. And then these are the rejected ones. But mm -hmm. instead of the masters to take the weak ones back home, they were not returned back home. They were killed because they see them as waste. So you can see 40 slaves. 40 slaves were kept in a barracoon before the ship arrived to the Atlantic Ocean. Then from the barracoon, they marched them through the slave port, through the slave port, then down to the point of no return. So this is the marching to the point of no return. But instead of the masters to, to return this slave back home because the slave is looking tired, Instead of them to return, remove the chains and then take the slave to go freely, they just cut off the head of the slave, remove their chains and continue their journey. Because any slave that falls, they believe the slave is pretending. So that is why they prefer the slave to die than going freely. And then we have the slave dealers. Though we have both African and the foreign slave dealers. So here we have the foreign dealers. So the foreign dealers are more than this, though, but these are the major ones. We have the likes of Captain Hukro, we have Philip Livingston of New York, we have Humphrey Morris, and here we have a man called Prince Henry the Navigator, the man who explored the West African coast. And here we have a man called John Hawkins, who happens to be the first English slave dealer to carry 300 slaves from West Africa down to the Queen of England. And here we have a man called hmm. Felix de Souza, who dominates slave trade in Wida for over 30 years. But the funniest thing about this man is that when he got to the Queen of England, he was made a knight by the Queen of England for bringing 300 slaves at a time. He was made a knight by the Queen of England. And now we have a city in England imagine? called Bristol City, which was built with wealth from slavery in the year 1894. Then the African dealers, we have the likes of King Tegbisu of Dahomey, that is in Benin Republic. We have King Alve of Congo. In, in Badagri here, we have eight chiefs, and all the chiefs are dealers. But the prominent dealers, we have King Sumbu Mobi, and mm -hmm. also we have Chief Wau of Ahavka Quarters. And then Lagos, we have King Kosoko of Lagos, and so on. So you can see different adverts. So here we have to be sold and let by public auction on Monday, the 18th of May, 1829. Also we have one to be sold, a cargo of 94 prime healthy Negroes, consisting of 39 men, 15 boys, 24 women, 16 girls, just arrived. There's also one that sells slave at cheaper rate. They call it Black Friday sales. That is when slaves were sold at cheaper rate. That's where the Black Friday sales came from. And also we have the auction, the process where they sold the slave to the highest bidder. Ah, oh, man. This hey. is sad. And then we have the prototype of the slave ship. So inside the ship, there are two different decks. So we have two decks. We have the upper deck and then the lower deck. The upper deck for the masters and then the lower deck for the slaves. The slaves were arranged at the lower deck, lying down, facing out for two to eight weeks. At the same spot, that is where they were forced to urinate and defecate. Then we are told that when the ship becomes too heavy, to move at their desired speed, they have to come to the lower deck of the ship, pick the weak ones, throw them inside the ocean, to make the ship become lighter. Then we can see the loading pattern, how the slaves have been loaded inside the lower deck of the ship. And also we have another one, slaves in the lower deck of the ship. So you can see them from here. So now I'm, I told you earlier that this building was built in the year 1863. But when did the believer want to leave this compound? He locked this safe. And then since 1958, 
the safe has not been opened up to the present moment. What we have in the safe, we don't know. So, this is the resistance and punishment gallery. So here you have a dog catching a runaway slave that is on the plantation. If a slave tries to run away, the master sets dogs after the slaves and the dogs are trained to go for the sofa gods. You can see different punishments even to the slaves on the plantation. You have the hanging of the slaves, you have the lashing of the slaves, how they have been lashed in public with an iron nakedly until they died. And you can see slaves revolting, slaves revolt on the ship, fighting for their freedom, saying enough is enough. They don't want slavery anymore. For the person that found the runaway slave, the person will be rewarded. So we have different rewards. We have the one of $1,400. $30 and $100 reward given to the person that found the one of the slave on the plantation. So here we have the abolition gallery. So these are people that stop slavery. Though we are told that slavery was stopped in different years, different years and in different countries. Exactly. For example, in Badagi, the treaty was signed in the year 1852. But it was illegally contained in 1888. There's a movie that just came out recently, I don't know. The movie is called The Woman King. Mm -hmm. So it happens to be a story of a particular place called Dahomey in Benin Republic. Then they, those people are called the Amazons. They are called the Amazons of Dahomey. Then these are the Amazons. These are the, these are the women that attack the, um, the Oyo people from capturing Dahomey warriors as slaves. Then here you can see a woman called Queen Nani of Ghana. Nani played a strong role during the Maroon Revolution and her fighting led to the foundation of the country called Jamaica. And here we have a woman called Harriet Stubman. Harriet rescued over a thousand slaves without losing any of the state. None of them died, all of them survived. Thomas Clarkson, we have Granville Sharp. We have a man from Igbo region called Olauda Ikiwano. He was first captured at the age of 11 years old. Then Guinness Food and then become an abolitionist. And here is a man called Frederick Douglass. And of course, this man is very popular, well known. And his name is William Wilberforce. Yes. And this is a man, of course, called Bishop Samuel Ajay Crowder, who happens to be a slave, and then gained his freedom, and then become the first African bishop in the year 1864. And this is a man called Candido J. Darucha, the richest among the slave returnees. The Vlekete slave market was the largest and oldest slave market along the west coast of Africa, established in 1502. It is the exact location where buying and selling of slaves to the New World took place. It was recently restored and upgraded by the Lagos State Government into Vlekete Slave Market Museum International, with many galleries, which include Badagri Gallery, Enslavement Gallery, Slave Market Gallery, Middle Passage Gallery, Slave Dealers Gallery, Travail Gallery, Librators Gallery, and an Underground Dungeon. The Trade Market Day took place once every five days, and 300 slaves were sold on every market day, while the unsold slaves were sent back to the Underground Dungeon pending another slave market day. 17,000 slaves were sold annually. The dark, deep underground dungeon had no ventilation. The only entrance into the place was through a ladder which gets removed after the slave have been dropped in.
All right, so um, this is the trial of Richard Landau. Richard Landau was, um, let me say, an, ex an explorer who was just seeing beautiful places, seeing Badagran. So he came to Badagran after slavery had been abolished completely. So when he visited, of course, the people were still skeptical, cautious, careful about dealing with white people. Because they don't want any um, reoccurrence of slave trade. They want the dark days behind them. So now when it got there, the people got scared. They got scared. They thought of this, like, what's a white man doing here? Is he, is he here to capture us again? So he was arrested and then taken to the palace of the white captain. And he was tried. And what did they do to, to try him? They just gave him a bowl of water to drink. So after drinking, that should test his innocence. Or is, that should also judge his intention. If his intention was to come to Badagra and capture black people as slaves, of course, he might have died from But he didn't die. He survived it. So that, this, this story tells us that um, Badagra people, the moment they, they, they got off that slavery idea, they did not want to go back to it. And since then, we have enjoyed uh, freedom from everything, politics, economy, I mean, everything in Lagos State and Nigeria as well. Thank you. The Brazilian Barracon, also known as Seriki Faremi William Abbas Museum, Hi. is the second okay. phase of the slave okay. trade process. What's the name? Amaka is the name. Wow. Oh. You, are, you are Igbo woman. Yes, I'm Igbo. Wow. <laughs> now, if I tell you I'm Cornerstone, can you tell me where I come from? Um, no, but maybe not Nigeria. Oh my god. But if I tell them I'm Kofi. Kofi? Oh yes, you're an, you're an African man. From where? Can you just guess? The people that bear that name? Kofi. Kofi is um, Ghana? Yeah, Ghana, Togoli. Togo, Abe, yes, Kofi. yes. <laughs> and I used to say, I, I wish the European or the American retain their forefathers' name. It would be easier for them to repatriate. There are these things, you see, if you want to destroy a man, take away his slaves, they destroy. This is where the black slave merchants kept the enslaved people they bought, awaiting arrival of the foreign slave merchants. So name? Okay. Brazilian so, Barakon. you're welcome. Thank now, you. the first slave trade that a lot of people don't even talk about started in the 7th century by the Arabs. Egypt, Morocco, all those sides belong to the Kush, Nubians. The first pharaoh happened to be a black man. But, and education started from Africa as well, in Egypt, to Mbutu and all that thing like that. But today, if you get to Egypt, how come it's another color ruling? That to say, the jihadists keep majority of the blacks along that axis, and that's why you see them ruling. But in the 14th or 15th century, the transatlantic slave trade began by the Portuguese, by a man called Prince Henry, the navigator of Portugal. And the trade lasted for almost 400 years. But why the trans Arab slave trade lasted for 17 centuries? And a lot of people hmm. don't talk about that. The trans Arab. Now, this company that we are right now, the world know the company as Brazilian Barracon. I told that slave we are taking to different parts. The Yubo taken to Georgia. Georgia, Hela. yes. Now, majority of the slave taken for this company, we are taken to Brazil. And they were Yoruba origin. And today, if you get to Brazil, you see the traces of the Yoruba down there. There's a god among the Yoruba they called Yemeja. Over there, they call Yemeja. Eshu, Ezu, Yalakara, Akaraje, Oshu, Ozun. That will tell that they are Yorubas that be moved from this compound to Brazil. And Barakun is a Portuguese word because it was the Portuguese who started the transatlantic living trade. Because I wanted to ask, is yes. there Georgia yes. Barakun? It was coined from the word Barak, meaning uh. cell, dungeon, mm. or store her where the slave we have been kept then. Now, this is the senator of the man that owns the compound. He was co-founder for the, for the replacement of Egbado, victim of war in the year 1902. They founded this Aitoru. You see the statue there, around right about there. Yeah. Now, who is him? When he was at the age of six, he was captured during the Egbas and Daume war at Jogaurile. We call them Daume, or we call them slave readers, you understand? So, when they capture him at the age of six, he has a name that his parents gave to him, and they gave him 
Ifare Mileku was given to him as a name. Okay. Brother, Today, yeah. how come the name now changed drastically to Seriki Williams? Williams. Abba. Abba. That's a question a lot of people that yes. come and to ask her. Now, the first master that owns him as a slave named Abbas. Abbas was a black man, a slave trader, an Islamic scholar who lived in the Republic of Daume. The Republic of Daume was changed to Benepop in 1975. Maybe we had a Kotonu yeah. Now, Abbas, the first master, a black man, made him a domestic slave because we have two categories of slaves. A domestic slave that work in their master's house, while the field work on the farm or on the plantation. Abbas was the first master that owns him as a slave. He made him domestic slave. He later resold him to a white man called Williams. Wow. Sir Williams took him down to Brazil. He made him domestic slave too. He now taught him how to read and right. write, which was illegal. Slave, we are not meant to go to school. One day, William called him, young man, come. Let me give you your freedom with condition. You're going to work for me. And he grabbed the offer. And William set him free. When he left Brazil, he first settled down in Lagos Island, from Lagos Colony, around often today, when he get there, he see the family living there. From Lagos Colony, he came down to the settlement here in Badagri. When he came to Badagri, it was the second Williams, the second master, that built this compound for in the 1840s. In the 1895, he became the Seriki Muslimi of Badagri. Seriki is a title among the Muslims, okay? okay. Because slaves have no name, they bear their master's name. That's why he chose to bear the, the first master, the second, and the title that he had. Since his second master, Williams, yeah. freed him, yeah. And he, he got back to you yeah. know Nigeria. Yeah. Why didn't he change his name? Must he identify with this name? Did he change his name at any point? He did. This you know I told you slaves when he was at that captive, he cannot change the name okay. because that's the name. You understand? Mm. Slaves bear their master's name. But later when he got his freedom, okay, he started adding his own bad name. Ifare Mileku. To most of his documents. Document. But once you are talking about history yeah. and slavery, he has yeah. to be identified with his Definitely, name. Yeah, yeah. These items on the wall, these are some of the European products that were used in a change for the slave when they arrived in Africa. Because when the European came to Africa, we Africans, we have our own currency. I mean money, money that yeah. we spend. Now, let me mention four types of money we spent in the olden days in Africa. Tobacco, were used as money in Africa in the tobacco. There's what we call yala salt. There's what we call cowrie shell. Oh, yeah. Yoba call it oweyo. I don't know. Do you know the name? Do you call it? <laughs> no, I you don't, don't know. know. <laughs> Just go and lend that place. <laughs> we also have Manila. Manila, if you look at our 100 and old, the one that carries our Lord's logo, you notice a green star. Mm -hmm. There's a covering in. If you turn the back, you see two here, then another one here. We call it Manila. Portuguese use Manila. Our forefather too use money like those days. But when they arrive, them say they don't want to do business with our forefather with those kind of money that they would have prepared doing trade by Bata. Trade by Bata simply means I give you good for I give good. You now, yes. Europeans, we give our forefather an umbrella. They collect 40 enslaved Africans. Because of one umbrella? 40 minimum, yeah. Wow. Could you believe that we still have the surviving umbrella up till date? I would definitely want to see it. Yeah, good. <laughs> now, a bottle of whiskey go for 10 human beings as a slave day. And we have a bottle of 1873 from Vienna, Austria, inside the museum I'm going to show you. A ceramic bowl. We call it breaking plate in our houses. European, we give our father a plate. They collect 10 human beings as a slave that time. And we see have five or such plate that I'm going to show you later. Mirror. Same for the bowl. Yeah. Mirror. Mirror and the beads. The kettle was given to Seriki Abbas by, Brazilian, by the European friends that were doing the trade. When he became the Seriki, when they want to turban him, while the Braddicks was given to him by the Brazilians that they are doing the trade. Now, these are called cannon guns. Cannon guns then were used to fight war. Europeans will give our father the longer one, they collect 100 human beings as a slave. The shorter cannon gun go for 40 human beings as a slave. And a ding gun, you over call it a born shakabula. Europeans will give you a ding gun, they collect 40 human beings as a slave. Now, ma, the hmm. question I used to ask people is this. We Africans or black men, what do we do with the guns and the cannon? We use it to we fight ourselves, ourselves fight, so yeah. to get mostly to set to the European. We sold ourselves into slavery. Though a lot of people sometimes put the blame on the Europeans. 
or whatever they call all the African sheep that are doing the trade. The both sides are guilty of this trade. These two doors have been here since the 1840s when the compound was being established. It's one of our monuments that people come here to see. Now, let me show you something at the back so that to show that this building, uh, the door has been here since 1840s. You can see, look at this old in these inches. You know, the what we produce yeah. now is very short. You can see the longer, that's what they use then. Then you can see the inches. You can see this one then. They will not use this to guard it, so there's no way you can. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I feel the weight of this iron to my. Can you see how heavy it is? It is yeah. heavy. So heavy, right? Good. Yes. All the 40 rooms that we have in the compound today used to be like a smaller room like this. The in there is called dark room. We are still going there. That's where 40 enslaved Africans were being kept awaiting the slave ship for three to four months. Now, here is known as inspection room. Hmm. Okay? And it's... <laughs> Call it a potish, I know that's match box. This is where Sidi Kebas normally keep most of his documents. We didn't know how many slaves that were used really to call it this old day box. Now, this one is called Kovlin Yoke or Anko Shackle. They use this iron to yoke two slaves together. I think we should experiment, my sister. Come yes, on. Yes, I want to experiment yeah. everything. Yeah, now stand beside, beside me here. Now, if you look that big picture clearly, the slaves were not putting on shoe. These three guys. Okay. Are they no, 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 don't worry, don't worry, because we are not slaves. <laughs> okay. Are we slaves? No, say, I'm not. Say we, we are, are not, not slaves. We are not slaves. Say we are not slaves. We are not slaves, yeah, please. Africans are not slaves. Now, they will pull this on the ankle of the first slave, then the ankle of the second slave. Now, look at this straight rod here. Mm -hmm. They will pass it from there. Then to the second, then they will now yoke two of us together. Mm -hmm. They will put their padlock, padlock here. Yeah. So, so that means this leg will be changed with another person. No, 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 no. Really. Just two people. And in the manner, if they change everybody, that you say they are taking them away to okay. the new world, to Europe or something. That's why they will do the normal change. But I and I, we are working on the plantation, so oh. they have to change us because the plantation we are over 200, 100 slave works. Barely only one general overseer or two that is monitoring them so that they will not be able to escape. They have to they, because it's going to be yeah, difficult them to get this, yes. So now, while we are working, we have to work in one accord. We have to agree with ourselves because Which if we disagree, we will be. That's yes. why that we'll be injuring our ankle. Let's try Shall to I? move. Okay, one or two. Which move? leg first? You see. So and we are busy working. You know, or maybe walk. probably you are walking, so you have to walk in there, you understand? So, you can see it. So, should I free you? So, how long would they have to walk? 
Do they have breaks? Do they give them water later or Eat. they just the master decides whenever? Should we say slay work for 24 hours? Because your master can, can just decide and wake you at any time, go and do this. You have no Option. choice. Probably they just because really they are not well fed. You understand? And the main reason why they were not well fed, European believe that if slaves were well fed, they have a stamina to, to revolt. Back, yeah. So they don't want such to occur. Or they use, look at that thing over there. That thing is called iron muscle. Oh, this one? Yes. So they have to, yeah, cover, preventing them to oh for it. God. So now, let me quickly free you. Ah, please. Now, free then, me secondly, quick. look at this iron over here. It's heavy. We call this one iron drilling bait. Now, they used to put this inside a fire. Now, if I'm a Maka slave, my name should be a Maka, they use this to write a Maka on my checks or at my back. We call it brandy because slave store here were owned by different owners. For identification, you just have to brand your slave. They did the brandy of the women at the back, the men at the front because of their breasts. Because, you know, the women, they can't do their, you understand? So, right there. Sometimes, they also used to perforate, to pierce the upper level of the slave and, and they put pack lock, so prevent yes. them from eating. Now, let me just bottle this up. Even though on the voyage, while they were taking the slaves away, some slaves want to starve themselves to death. You understand? They say they will not eat. This is what the European we do. You know, a pliers. You know, pliers. Mm -hmm. They bring pliers, they remove the two front teeth. You know, whenever they'll, so be, they'll be holding hold, hold their passes. And they'll pass the food through. So it's a terrible thing that ever so happened mean. to man. Kind. Now, That's this terrible. very iron here, and the one over the wall there, the one at the wall there, we are mm -hmm. used to kill the slave. Later, when we enter the second cell, I'll be telling you how they do the lynching of the slave with these two chains. Now, this chain standing here, this one is called, there's what you call chariot or cart. See, RT, that's in hold normally pull, owned yes, by yes, Sereke yes. Williams Abbas. Now, we are going in now to see the dark room. We are 40. In Slovakia, yeah. we have been kept awaiting this slave ship. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> wow. wow. So, you're welcome, Amaka. 40 now, people were here. Yeah, I want you to look up. What you see is called bamboo. Yeah. It's not a bamboo that they use for the cylinder. If it, if it were bamboo, the slaves were not full. Africans are not full. They will have escaped mm -hmm. through the roofing. Now, you know clay. I stick like three feet like this. Last, I see you did a decking. Mm -hmm. And they do the clay with it, some African light, thick wood. So the clay, so there's no way to escape. Now, come, 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 come closer. Look at that small window up there. Can you see that window? That right hand? Yes. That what you give them ventilation. So imagine putting 40 elderly men or human here for, for, for three to four months awaiting this lady. And they'll see close this oh. door here. And they'll be here for three to four months. This is where they defecate, pee, do a lot of things. Imagine the odor, the heat, and imagine how many of them will have died here. That's why when people come here, I tell them, they're not here to catch from, but just to feel the pain the people the past have felt. Now, this bottle, if you look at the body of the bottle, you see 1873, be customized on the body. The bottle is from Vienna, Austria. That's 10 human beings you are seeing. So, we can give you one, a bottle of whiskey. You can attain human being. Now, look at that round object. We call that in record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, record. They call it in gramophone. While we are growing up, I think my uncle used to have one. You know, you will be rolling it and he started to play and people will be dancing, you know, the kind of thing. It's called record. Now, but today we use DVD and CD. Now, this is called Bradix, given to Seriki Abbas when he became the Seriki Muslim of Adagri Kingdom. So, Brazilian gave him this as a gift. Now, the Ketu and the Timor was given to him by the European. Now, sometimes ago, some Germans came here and I asked them to translate. Sometimes, I, yeah, them. can you do, I don't know, in Lord just ja me or such a quit. Sorry, I'm not a German. Yes. So they said, if you, if you look at the picture of a man, the no, drawing, the, you can oh. say he's say dancing. Mm -hmm. They said, in a circle where people are taking drinks, they also be merriment, they also be joy. Around the circle where people are taking drinks. Now, Amaka, look. Look at this plate that you are seeing here. This is one, two, three, four, five. Each of these plates go for 10, 10 human beings as a slave. Plates? Yes. And it doesn't matter the size of the plate. Once they give you one of these, 
you give them 10 human beings, and that is it. 50 human you are seeing in here as a slave. Now, these three pots were locally made here in Africa, probably Yoba Kingdom. Now, you know, Muslims, while doing their prayer, they wash their face, legs, mm -hmm. and go. Now, we call it ablution. Sidiqui Abbas, if he want to take his bed or do his prayer, this way they used to keep his bed for ablution, soup, and then his drinking pot. This way they used to put his drinking pot. Now, we are now moving to see the second cell out of the 40 rooms. You know, I told her we have yeah, 40, 40 yes. beds. Two rooms are being commissioned at the government to, as a cell. Now, let's see the second. We are not many here, but already feels tough. Okay. Just how many of okay. us You are here. sweating already. I'm yeah. sweating. So imagine 40, 40 in people. here. I'm sweating. So a lot of them died here. So it's terrible. The movement of Africans as a slave is to America. It's not the middle per se, that what is being called. And that's how they used to chain them down. Okay? We call that movement single file. They'll be mm. in a straight road. And mostly because the slave chain is so heavy with the with rings, so they normally tie their hand at the back so that they don't be able to open the slave chain and escape. Now, um, this is the building where Sidi Kiyabara resided. The building collapsed in this corner in 1995, so it been 1847. That would be the last place we'll be seen, and this is one of the doors of the building. Now, uh, my sister, I want you to look at these pictures here. These pictures tell a lot of story. The two guys, they were readers, and they wanted to capture the chief mm -hmm. as a slave. The man took knife and killed Oops. himself. Now, as a human, you'll be wondering why must he kill himself? Because this man is the implication to be a slave. You see, every morning when I wake up, a uh, tear used to drop from my eyes. Why do I drop tear? Because there's a lot of certainty that surrounds our dreams here in Africa. Why are we suffering in the midst of the plenty? That's a question I used to ask people. Our leaders today over there, are they not our brothers that we elect to go and represent us? Why, when they get there, why do they turn their back? There's something wrong, which a lot of people are not treated. Even the, the, the mom, the pastor don't even know. But those that we sold, those that jumped from the voyage into the water, those that they kill, their spirit here is here in Africa, crying for vengeance. That's why we are not getting it. But until we learn to say sorry to some sisters of people, probably Africa will be back from where she be read all tracks. Yeah. Now, the man killed himself. Now, there's a thing called Django, the chain. If you watch the thing, you see, if any slave try to escape, they will release like 20 of those dogs. We call them killer's dogs. And they will devote the slave to bone if they get the slave. And they call them killer's dog. I told that slave bear their master's name. Yes. Look at these pictures here. Any slave that refused to accept the master's name, they will tie it on the, on the stake and struck him. Sometimes some of them we are beaten to death. If any slave die, no case because they are property of somebody. Yeah, somebody. Look at these bricks. These are the bricks that they use to build this compound. Then, Now, originally, the compound was not being plastered, what you are seeing today. You'll be seeing these bricks Brick, yeah. outside. They lay then. Yeah. I bet today, the compound has been defaced by the family called the leaf in here. Then I will show you, later I will show you the iron corrugated section that they use for the roofing. I'll take it. Now, we are moving in. You wash your head again. I don't know if you have seen this before. Look at this yes, iron cord. Yeah. Just feel the weight. Ah, this one is dead look at what we produce now. Like this, look at me. I'm a look. You see? One hand. Yeah, it's very easy. And this is what we use now. Then you get 20 of these out of this edible zinc that you have seen there. Now, that's what they use for the, And up today, if you check for it on the roofing, you just see what one more. Then for the roofing of the building, then. They can't now, break out. They can't break this one. Yeah. Now, this is another sad one. We call this thing gallo. Now, gallo. Yeah. They normally mow the gallo in the plantation. Or if there's a tree in the plantation where the slave used to, they use it as a gallo. Now, 
any slave that plan evil or maybe you try to escape or you try to conscientize the other slave or you try to uh, to uh, to lay a coup to commit coup against your master the penalty is to be hung on gallow that chain that i show you in the first side in the mm -hmm. show glass yes. and the one over the wall will be tied around the ribs of the men as you can see they will not tie the hand at the back the women two hand over they'll be suspended okay they will be there dying gradually so they're just trying to instill in that to put fear into other, other slaves yes. so as I'm you see them the they will not last for a day before they will die now this picture to tell another story now uh around 1791 in dominica republic are they today known as haiti when the slaves were being led by a man called Tuzent Louvertures of Haiti, the key majority of those whites. But later, they got their independence. And later, the French came back to them. They should pay damages for killing their people. We call it reparation. And this, up to the Haitians were still poor because some say they are still paying to the French colony. I don't know how true it is that really, but I've never traveled down to Haiti rather. I'm still in Africa, but most of the colony the French colonial in Africa were still paying colonial tax of the And me, as a young man, uh, I foreseen it as a slab. How could somebody invade my land, force me away as a slave, and we are still paying? Mm. I think our leaders are supposed to explain to us so that we grow up with it, so we know how to tackle the problem that we are facing. So that we are and because painful. we have everything. Why must we suffer in the midst of plenty? And when the slave they started, putting ropes on the neck of the master. Now, there's some groups. tell you maybe probably no but to me i see the slavery is still going on isn't it yes by slavery, yeah. and 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 slavery is still mm. going on up to that modern slavery yeah, modern slavery is still going on so. okay you want to know why the abolition took yeah. place you want to know the actual reason why slave trade stopped stay tuned yeah. i'll let you know can you see those come over Can you see? Mm -hmm. You can see the mud they use. You can see. So they do it on top like a deck in there. The technology is like this. You know, the, those iron corrugated is so thick. You know, when sunshine came, the heat may not be too much. You know, that's why they have to put, you know, yeah. to make it a little bit cool. Cool for them. Yeah, for them. So, let's go. This is the Brazilian barracoon where Seriki Williams Abbas stayed and who was buried here. Okay, come, let's go. We have more things to show you.
So guys, stay tuned. We have a two kilometer walk to the land of no return. By God's grace, we will return. Catch you. Padagri slave port is the gateway to slave trade. Behind this port is a lagoon that leads to the two kilometer original slave route. The attenuation well is also along this route. And lastly, Verifon Peninsula, that is the land of no return. Now we are the last phase of the slave trade process where the enslaved people with heavy chains on their neck, shackles on their feet, were forced to walk down this two kilometer into the vessel to a land of no return. When you get to this point, there's no going back. And when they leave, they don't know when or if they will ever return. Let's take the two kilometer walk, head into the vessel, and let's feel what they experienced. Let's go. How are you feeling? By the way, I'm tired. Ah, you should ah. be. You should be. But if you had told me you were not tired or you are not tired, I would have wondered if you lived maybe 2,000 years ago. <laughs> because even me, that's why the fact that I do this almost you know, every other day, I get tired. So it's something I do, but I still get tired. Now, you look at, look at um, the expanse of land ahead of us. Um, history says that back then, um, even before Badagri got established, um, the whole of this place used to be a salt plantation. Mm. So that was the trade that Badagri people were making. The Badagri town we were coming from yes. used to be a farmland. And the people, the settlers, were initially living here as salt makers. So, you know, and then salt was a very, very lucrative you know, business. business. It was a mineral resources. Because, but they were always attacked by sea pirates. So that was actually what they were. I think there was one mad attack that you know, got them pissed and they decided to move to the present day Badagri. But don't worry, don't worry. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. tired. You're, you are just going to take a sip of the water from the attenuation well, ah. which we have ahead of us. Okay. The water will hypnotize you. You won't even feel any pain, and then maybe... Like you think I'm going to drink that water? <laughs> no, you, you have to... Uh, okay, I will drink, then... Let's get there first. If everything is fine with me, you will also have a taste of it. Let's get there first. So we are almost there. We are almost there. So the thing with the water is there are school, two schools of thoughts attached. One school of thought believes that it completely wipes off your memories, while the other school of thought... What's first? I want to ignore that, okay. Take okay. a breath, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. You're almost there. Okay. You're almost there. And water, so as I was saying before, are you tired? Really? Yes, I am tired. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so the school of thought now says that one says um, it completely wipes off your memory, mm -hmm. while the other says it just hypnotizes you. Oh, okay, yes. So um, for me, I, I am of the school of thought that it's, Kind of hypnotizes you yeah. because if it wiped their memories off then it is possible that the acculturation we have where the brazilian architectures the returning slaves coming down doing stuff in africa and then our own culture going over there like you have in in brazil today yoruba bindia other language they practice lemonja shango you know, all of these African deities mm -hmm. are worshipped there. They wouldn't have gone with this or with those parts yeah. of their culture. So that would be me aligned with the school of thought that... Because um, amnesia was never recorded. Yeah, there was no complete was, loss of yeah, memory. Yeah, there was no complete loss of memory. Yeah. Rather, they were just weakened all through um, the, 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 the journey. How long now, was the duration of the journey? Duration? It depends on like three, the... Four hours, it depends three, four months, sorry. Months, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So now, we had the original spot, Slave Spirit Attenuation well. Well. Wow. After drinking the water, the enslaved people were also forced to recite these words. I am leaving this land. My spirit lives with me. I shall not come back now. My shackles do not break. 
It is the shackles that holds the sheep down. My ancestors bear me witness. I shall not return. This land shall depart. My soul do not revolt. My spirit goes along with me. I depart to the land unknown. I shall not return. I'm pretty sure it's just normal natural water. So if you drink this now, you probably have, you won't be hypnotized. <laughs> you probably have um, cholera. And other you know, diseases, and yes. And other diseases that are attached. Wow, these people so, really went through and, a um, lot. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people rather, you know. Drunk from diseases. And they will head again. Yeah, and then they continue their journey. I mean, if 300 slaves were sold every five days for a business that lasted for over 400 or years, years. So you can do the calculations. Phew. Okay. Sad, so. so we'll continue to... Yes, 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 yes. Upon arrival at the unknown destination, the enslaved people were sold to new masters, either as domestic slaves or as plantation workers, and they regained consciousness afterwards. You can see it. You can see it beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah, but this this construction is still ongoing. Mm, well, the Not construction didn't pass quality assurance test, oh. so the government decided to, you know, um, leave it the way it is. I think they have an issue with the contractor, so they don't want anybody coming here and getting injured. So the contractor okay. is going to come and and solve that. But now, imagine you as a slave, you know, you've walked all of those distance, you've covered miles. And then you are at this spot where we are right now, seeing your last transportation. With the chains with and, the sh shackles and the shackles moving know. slowly. Mm -hmm. Ah, gosh. Um, there's this big ship, you know, waiting to take you to a point. Like you don't even know. Unknown destination. unknown destination. How would you? How, you know, they, they, they had no idea. Maybe the first set we, we were excited. But the set afterwards, we waited years, waiting for the first people to come back, but didn't return. Now, those people were not captured again. And then they were asked to take, or they were forced, rather, to take the same route. It would have been devastating. The first people might not even be excited because knowing, how, knowing what you went through here, yeah, the torture, of, yeah, no yeah, love. So yeah, even if you are yeah, taking me I on a ship to anywhere, I already there, know there, what to expect. No excitement, no excitement. Now, oh. um, we are now at um, the point, the exact, when they say point of no return. Berefu Peninsula, also known as point of no return, was a major slave port after it was opened in 1473 during the transatlantic slave trade era. Walk through that gate. Okay, that you're supposed to, no return, so you yes, go once out. You, cross through that gate, you don't know where it's leading you to. You are automatically out of your own motherland. This is the exact location where the Europeans loaded the enslaved wow. Nigerians on their ships. Like picnic. like picnic, come have fun. Yes, oh. yes. And now we are at the very last, last, last spot 
of a journey that lasted for centuries. This was where the enslaved people last set foot in their homeland. May the gentle souls of our forefathers who departed from here continue to rest in perfect peace. Amen. Slavery is now illegal internationally and in Nigeria. However, legality is often disregarded with our diverse cultural traditions that see specific behaviors and activities as their way of life instead of slavery. Modern slavery seems hard to identify. Some examples are child marriage, human trafficking, child slavery, forced labor, kidnapping, and sexual exploitation. Slavery was not and is still not based on region, tribe, or religion. It is important for us to know the history of slave trade so it can motivate us against the divided Africa we have today. We should fight against all forms of tribalism, racial discrimination, and social injustice that are a legacy of the same slavery. In our little corners and offices, let us be intentional and get rid of words like tribe, state of origin, local governments, and religion in our documents. We yearn for Africa to be united because there is great success when we stand as one. Hashtag Africa must unite.